being sent has become a conflicting resource because um, of, of several reasons. I can also only recommend that book that was earlier mentioned. Um, there's really great information on that story, but this is happening and, and it's worrying. Um, just as well as the whole problem with the waste that we get from demolished buildings. So um, that also is a big problem that we are looking at. But on the other side, that's positive things. Um, this is the, the statistics for Germany, and uh, we are looking currently at something like 76 millions of cubic meters wood harvested per year and 122 millions of cubic meters wood growing per year. So um, there is a lot of wood. Um, the, the forest is actually growing. And in, I'm just showing this because it's not always clear to everyone that uh, because quite often you hear, why would you cut down the trees? I mean, they they should be growing. Yes, and we need the forest, but if we sustainably manage it, then it makes a lot of sense to take the wood into buildings where they store a lot of carbon dioxide and uh, it is embodied for the lifetime of the building. So we need to make sure that we are using it in a cascade. It's going to be used for energy production at the end of its life cycle, and we make a long life cycle out of it. And um, yeah, there's much that we can improve. This is the statistics for Germany. And um, there is even in, in the south where we have relatively high rates of, of timber construction currently, still a lot of um, room to grow. And as you see on the graph on the left side, it is growing. So um, this is happening and uh, this will continue over the coming years. We are doing it. Um, we are using more sustainable renewable resources for building. But there is also issues. Um, my talk is about the role of digital fabrication and um, why is that important? Um, one reason, as you can see here, is that we are the, the most hit sector of, of all industry sectors when it comes to a lack of skilled workers. And, and this is a big problem and it has many reasons. It's also sometimes dangerous and very hard work that we're looking at here. And um, therefore, it is particularly critical. A solution for this problem in, in most other industry sectors is digital technology. And if you look at digital technology, this graph here is actually showing different industries and how they perform with digital um, advancements and building industry, which would have probably been also your feeling, is the least digital industry that we have. So this is a problem. Um, so we have the problem with skilled labor. And at the same time, there's not enough innovation. And there's also not enough digital technology being used in building industry. So why is that? Um, we have the, the top um, ranks in, in this digital technology for mass production. And, and this is just for many reasons, these companies, they are uh, completely differently structured. They have research departments, um, they have lobbying, um, which um, only some parts of the building industry have. So um, these are the reasons, but it's, it's really much linked to mass production. And in building industry, we are simply not looking at mass production. So if you look at this example here, um, there is a very complex CNC program being made for the mold of a tire. And if you make this very complex mold, then it, it's taking time, right? You need a very skilled person to, to create that CNC program. And then um, it, it might take multiple days or a week of programming to perfection this CNC program. But then you are with this shape, with this mold, you are making uh, hundreds of thousands possibly of tires. Um, so the product, um, it, it's a very large mass of products that you get out of this week of programming. Whereas in, in the building industry, we have increasingly complex parts um, and, and we can do that with technology. But the, the issue is really, <laughs> we, we don't have the same situation. We, we run that CNC program one time, typically, one single time. So we cannot do what the other people in the industry are doing to just simply um, run this and, and spend a huge time um, for optimizing the program. We need um, very smart technology, very smart algorithms to, to help us with that. And I think uh, the, the 
thing that's overseen quite often is that um, a couple of things haven't really changed in the building industry. If you look at these two situations, it seems like it's a big advancement that we are now working on computers, but ultimately um, the same thing um, that you see in these two images is basically that, uh, as you see on the left side, that the way we are working is with a drawing that equals the information typically. And that is what you call in other sectors this what you see is what you get versus what you see is what you mean situation where um, you can you can really deal with a lot more complexity once you start to separate the data the logic and the display of a complex structure or a complex machine and and this is really a step that uh, we are struggling i i feel a little bit in the building industry and what we have to overcome so we are a little research group and, and uh, teaching group at the University of Kaiserslautern. We can only do very little projects, but um, we, we try to excite our students. We try to, to play with uh, technology and um, show what can be done and, and try to do some things that haven't been done before. And much of it has to do with fabrication technology, which over the years has, of course, advanced from hand tools over machine power tools and now the latest generation of uh, information processing technology. And um, with these advancements, the way that we connect things has changed a lot. And this is very important for our research because the, the connections, they, they used to be something pragmatic, but you heard before that today um, we are facing uh, entirely different challenges with connections. For example, we are not just transferring the loads and, and want this building to stand up, but we might uh, first of all um, want to pre-produce it with machines that we currently do not have on site. We don't have a robot on site where we have very tough conditions with, with rain and wind, etc. Um, we have them in a factory environment currently. And, and if you want to use them and really take advantage of them, then um, we have to make sure that they, they take away complexity that we currently have on site and we make things faster. So rapid assembly and uh, connections that um, allow for a precise assembly that will make the building perform better over its life cycle are very critical. So we can take that complexity currently from the site into the prefabrication and, and then the connections are very critical to really save the time that we gain with the factory when we arrive on the building site. And at the same time, um, we've been hearing um, the, the reversibility of structures that uh, we want to reuse, as we heard before. Um, again, this is a topic that I think digital fabrication can, can help a lot with. I will show um, that we have been working with these connectors here, um, which I think uh, they, they address multiple of these topics. They are, first of all, replacing a material that was um, less ecologic. They replaced steel connectors with a particularly um, sustainable material, which is hardwood in this case. It's uh, a wood that we're currently not using enough. And at the same time, um, they, they allow for very rapid assembly and what is currently not uh, fully implemented, they, they might be the key to reversible structures that can be disassembled as well. So the, the first project uh, that basically came out of my PhD thesis was the VD Theater, which was part of um, this research that I did, um, as I said, with my PhD at EPFL in Lausanne with the IBOA group. And uh, the, the idea was really that if we manage to, to connect plates, um, which is just something that doesn't work very nicely with um, either metal connectors, so uh, if, we, if we get back to the cabinet working connections, then we can connect these thin plates and then we can replace one, one thick wood plate structure with two thin layers, which is a lightweight building principle. And again, this is something that we heard today before, um, reducing the mass of structures, reducing the weight of structures is clearly one of our goals um, in all of our research projects. 
And the complexity that comes with, with this uh, lightweight building and um, the, the complexity that comes with these joints that do not use steel. This is what digital fabrication can, can take care of. The algorithm that will generate these elements and the algorithm that will um, fabricate these elements. I mean, these are basically always different things. These uh, 3D elements that you look at right here, they are um, basically only for you to look at. The way machine data is generated is, is very different actually. And yeah, here you see um, this, this finished building. And what I think is quite interesting is that this is actually not an expensive building. Um, it is a, a principle that um, reduces the amount of material that you need. It's reducing any connectors because the, the plates are the connectors. This is consisting only out of wood plates. It has a relatively simple roof structure. Um, and the expensive thing about it was software development. But now that you have it, it could be used for other projects. And what I also want to highlight is um, that the machine that we've been using, sorry for the slightly choppy video, but you get a, a feeling for this machine, it was very old. This was a 20 year old machine, 20 year old. Um, we are talking about technology that is long there, that the complexity for us in buildings is really a um, complexity in software. The machines, even the whole robotic technology is, is old and um, it's something that you will find at, at many, many companies. So really it's about um, dealing with the software problems for the coming years. And yeah, you can look at this building in, in Lausanne if you visit Lake Geneva. Um, they did actually paint it black later uh, for the performance of the theater, but um, it is, I think, something that you can visit rather easily. So the, the next project that I want to show is the Recycle Shell project that we did last year. And again, is I think very much around these ideas of, of new concepts for circularity. The, the wood, using the wood for buildings is a great thing, but the way we're using it right now, especially with these CLT plates where we cut out windows and doors, it can be rather wasteful because you imagine Everything is, is fitted to the size of trucks. Um, and this is also the size that they use for these presses to make the plates. Um, it is making drawing easy when you have um, like one solid element where you just cut out the doors and the windows, but it is wasteful because what do you do with these cutouts? Um, it's, it's an expensive material. Um, which every square meter um, will will count, and your client will have to pay for it. But you will you will first take every node out of this material. You will make it really high quality, and then you will just cut out twenty percent of it and throw it away. It's a little bit crazy. And so the the idea was, can we do something with these small parts? And obviously, turning this into a um, wall or a flat ceiling is difficult because it would have a lot of loads on the connections between the plates, traction and bending. And um, this could be very expensive and difficult to solve. So something that we can do is uh, we use the complexity of, of programming. We deal with the complexity through programming and we make a, a compressive shell out of this material. And, and therefore the connections, they have still to do to deal with a little bit of um, traction and bending when we have uh, certain load cases, but mostly this is in compression and therefore we can get away with a lot more, lot less complex connections between the plates. And therefore we can, like I showed before, use um, wood connections, right? Um, this uh, X fix connector, it is completely made out of wood and it's, uh, as I said before, out of hardwood, a beech wood. And if you go into the forest, um, then you will maybe see when you look at the beech trees that you see on the right and uh, the spruce that we mostly use uh, for the last decades on the left, that the, the tree on the right, it, it has great performance. It's a very hard wood. It's very strong, but it's also growing um, not very straight and that makes it much less popular for buildings. But again, 
we can fix this. We can deal with technology, with these challenges. And um, what we get is a diverse forest. Um, and, and what we want is, is not a monoculture forest, which is currently creating huge problems because we planted trees that are that have never been really well fit for the areas where we planted them and now um, climate change is is really making it even worse so we need to get back to biodiversity and we need to embrace the possibility of using different types of wood here you see um, i hope the video is playing a little bit at least uh, that is so much fun. I mean, this is really like Lego. And you will see that here, in this case, we were securing the, the wood joints with a little bit of glue so they don't come out. But this is also because we we were, um, first of all, we made the cutouts a little bit too large. Um, it's a highly precise thing, and you need to perfectly calibrate everything that you do. Um, and then we also transported this with the truck from, from multiple places to one another and uh, we wanted to make sure it doesn't come out. But this has the possibility also for uh, being reversible. It just needs some more research. And yeah, we, we wanted to make this pavilion um, to, to show people that uh, this is possible and to use uh, even recycling material to make something quite high tech. And we also made it not just to look at, but also because we wanted to gain some information on how does this actually behave structurally. And um, we, we even needed to do a loading experiment on site, comparing it to our calculations, because we wouldn't have gotten building permission otherwise. Um, they will only let you build something um, which is unprecedented um, if you do actually prove with a physical loading test that uh, it, it matches your calculations with finite element software. And we did integrate, sorry, we did integrate also the, um, the local carpenter school. Um, and, and this was a great experience to involve them in the project. This is a project that um, couldn't be assembled with students um, because it was um, really requiring a crane and, and some, some really specific knowledge. So in this case, we collaborated with um, the Carpenter School and um, this is definitely something I want to continue because there is a lot of knowledge and we need to, we need to get our heads together to, to address these big challenges that we're facing. Finally, we also um, wanted to keep this, this test. It was a test to see the performance of this um, building under load and, and to get some scientific knowledge. But we also didn't want to just demolish it, which sometimes happens to prototypes. So the cheapest roof <laughs> that we could get for such a curved shape. And this is also something to think about if you want to make a shell. Um, something that makes it very expensive is typically the roof. Um, and a green roof is something that uh, works very well with such a geometry and uh, I'm still quite happy with that decision and this is just a couple of weeks ago, more than one year after we built the prototype and it's still looking great. So there's absolutely no water coming in anywhere and I'm very confident that this is going to be there for a long time. Finally, um, I'm going to show this, this Hexbox Canopy project where, again, we've been looking at a lightweight structure, even more lightweight, because this one here we made with a team of students where we were um, having very limited resources. We had a, a industrial robot, which is a rather small machine that you can put in, in a room at university. And uh, with this, you can cut only very thin plates. Also, we can only assemble very lightweight components with a team of students. And we wanted to distribute the work also. We wanted to involve a large group of students, 20 in my class, 20 in the class of a friend of mine who I did this together with Eduardo at the University of Sydney. And um, the students were then inspired also by this Recycle Shell project, um, developing joints entirely made out of wood, which are completely reversible joints, by the way. And we did, we did actually had to, we had to reverse them a couple of times because um, you have to take an element out and then put it in again. So it already proved useful. Yes, so here you see some pictures from, from the production of this structure. 
the joints, we ultimately made them from the exact same material as the rest of the shell. So we could use the waste material. And these are tiny parts that we need for the joints. They're, you see them, they're like three by five centimeter elements. So even with all the nesting optimization that we did, we put like the sides of the boxes into the cutouts on the bottom of the boxes, etc. But even the leftover material that we still had could be cut into strips and then the strips could be cut into little rectangles and you can use them for the joints that hold this together. And uh, therefore you see scarcity um, and I've always uh, admired at many universities you see that not every university has the greatest resources for building a structure and not the greatest resources for um, for fabricating something, not the greatest machines, but scarcity is sometimes really a push for creativity. And um, finally, I, I think the fact that we did use the same material, it, it makes it somehow also interesting visually. But this is for you to judge. Um, I think it is uh, really t dealing with a couple of the topics that we were talking about today. Um, using a renewable resource, having possibly reversible connectors um, between these boxes. And uh, if we had, in this case, the boxes are all different, but we could definitely make something which is consisting out of like two or three types of boxes. And then you could perfectly reconfigure them into something else. Yes. Uh, so, yeah. thank you very much for your attention. This is the team. Uh